What's the word, YouTube? You know who it is. It's your boy, Big Will. That's my dog, Ella. Life after prison. Let's run it. What's the word? Life after prison, gang. You know who it is. It's your host. <laughs> your boy. It's me, Big Will. That was my dog, Ella. She out here. Looking at the neighbors. Seeing who's going on, what's going on in the neighborhood. Keeping watch. The clouds rolling in. We're about to get some thunderstorms out here. Kill all that humidity. Anyways, we're back. You know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe button on your way in. Ooh, that thunder sounds good. I like the thunderstorms. They're so serene and calm takes all that humidity out you know how shit just sucks and it sticks and all oh, that 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 rain it just cools everything down and makes everything just beautiful anyways so we're gonna get into it um this story i had when um it was one of my bids it was only a short bid i had probably six months we had, um, it was right around Christmas time. Um, we had, we was having a little party. We went and had, um, we had a, a little celebration. <clears throat> it's no secret, I tell you, is all I've told you before. Um, I was back into drugs back then, and, um, I don't know more. A little jack now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Ah, right. <laughs> Again, you just can play with the tooth. My son knocked it out ten years old. Not none of you BS bitch. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, my son teach him how to fight, broke my tooth in half. Nice, right? But um it was Christmas time. Two thousand eight. And uh I had went in on a small, I had went in on a small bid, and, um, we wanted to have a good time, you know, it was Christmas time, so I had somebody bring something in, and, um, we all had a little party, now, when, when, you, when the whole block has a good time, and I'm, I'm one of them people, I share with everybody, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm a given person. That's what I am. So if you want to give me some like and uh, subscribes, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Want to hit the cash app? Look at the description. <laughs> I take PayPal too, but uh, no. So we're having a good time, and uh, I had the whole block faded. We were good. Some people can't handle it. You know what I mean? Some people just they get sloppy, real sloppy, and it's everywhere. You can uh. There's a, there's a joke that they have in uh, our local prisons out here. If you want to know who the Fall River guys are, throw some clodopins on the table. You'll see, all, uh, you'll see who gets high and who fights later. We all get high and fight with each other and whoever else once we get high. However, at this time I had heroin come in and... Everybody, everybody got turned on. We all had a, a nice, nice Christmas. Well, we had one guy walking up and down the aisles with his eyes closed, head cocked back, and he was uh, singing, uh, I love rock and roll. He was a mess. This is going 3 o'clock in the morning. No shirt on, eyes peeled back. At that time, you know, you just being yourself, going yourself. You know, own yourself, sit down, relax, and enjoy it. But no, the uh, kid's name was Melon. He had a good time, and he used no melons. Shout out to Melon. Brian. Again, I don't say last names. But um, him and uh, another friend of ours, he's passed on. Uh, rest in peace, Johnny Ponce. I gave his last name because he's passed on. He can't. He can't take no retribution for anything. But 
they had found him sleeping in the bathroom. He was just out cold on the toilet, right? And, you know, head all down. Uh, and them two were in the same um, same room together. We were in the mod at this time. And I think there's eight rooms and nine rooms. One, two, three. There's like, there's like eight and nine rooms. Five on one side, four on the other. And there's eight men to a cell. Three double bunks and two single bunks. Excuse me. And, um... But they were in a room across from us. And they had eight guys from Fall River in their room. My room, we had eight guys from Fall River. The next room, there was like four guys from Fall River. Um, three from New Bedford. Something like that. And one from Taunton. Um, next room we had, there was it was like uh, a couple guys from Taunton. <coughs> <One of, coughs> excuse me. One or two from Fall River. But we had a lot of guys in the block that were from Fall River and stuff. Um, and we all, we all, um, we all got high, right? And so by them two guys going to being on camera at 3 in the morning, um, they brought heat. By me going to the phone, now we were supposed to be in a small engine repair class, I was on the phone, I was... I went in, signed in, left, went to the phone, which was the, the the class was right in the day room. Any of you who who have been here in Dartmouth, you know what the day room is in the mods, right? So the, the class was right there in the day room. I'm sitting where I'm supposed to be at the table in class. I'm sitting off, and I just signed in, went to the phone, called my girl, and I fell asleep. Well, I had people wake me up and blah, 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 right? Now, when you're in the streets and you're getting high, you can, you can handle it, right? And, uh, you know, you can really tell someone who's getting high, you know? This is, you know, they just, they go, they have no muscle control and everything droops, right? Everything droops and, you know, you, you can just tell it's, it's gross looking. Really, really gross looking. You don't know it when you're doing it. But that's what someone looks like when they're getting high, right? And, um, long story short, there was a whole bunch of us. We all, we all got, now the next day, like I said, them two guys got lugged for the middle of the night. There was me, plus a few others that were on camera. And I mean, everybody was racked, right? So the next day comes, and, um, it was two days before Christmas. It was Christmas time, but it was two days before. I'm laying in my bunk, and I feel a kick in my bunk. I got my headphones on, and I'm jamming out, you know. Now, once these two got, once the other two guys got lugged, we knew the team was coming. We knew the dog was coming. We knew it was going to be a shakedown. We knew because, like I said, I was on camera wrecked. There was a couple other guys on camera wrecked, like the whole Fall River dudes. We were jammed, right? Everybody was all fucking jammed and going crazy. So they come in and they they come in and they lug a couple guys. Well, they come in and they grab me and they take me down for a urine the next day. At the time, they didn't give us a urine. They gave us. They were swabbing us. So I had the lieutenant come in and he took me down to medical and he checked all my vitals. Now at the same time, I was taking um, blood pressure medication. So it was leveling out my blood pressure. Even though I was high and my blood pressure was normal, I mean it was, uh, it was dropping. I was on blood pressure medication so it leveled out my blood pressure. So by them looking into my eyes, it was the next day now, my eyes were dilating. My blood pressure is normal. The nurse is like, I mean, he's normal. It also helped that I knew the nurse. We were close. <laughs> hey, close. Um, close. <laughs> but we had a. Uh, but she told the lieutenant, no, Lieutenant Obriga, he's good. He's, you know, he's good. Um, shout out to Lieutenant Obriga. Rest in peace. 
a couple of years later, he, uh, I think it was probably three years ago, he came home, couldn't handle the stresses of the job, plus his personal life, and killed himself in his backyard. God rest his soul. But anyways, he gives me a swab. And when he does, he drops it on the floor. Me right away, I perk up. I'm like, well, that's contaminated. Oh boy, was he hot. He was hot, right? He sent me back to the unit. Get the fuck back to the unit. He didn't have another one available at the time. All he had was one. They sent me back to the unit. I come back to you. Now everybody's like, how the fuck did you beat that? And I'm like, dude, he dropped a swab, right? I got a good. So I'm telling my celly, I'm like, listen, we got to do what we got. I know the team's coming back. We got to do it. So me and the kid have a party. Now the same night, because we lost so many guys, they ended up lugging like seven guys. At the time, there were so many whites in the unit. That the blacks had a couple of small little tables. You know what I mean? And because they lug like six or seven guys. The blacks just come over and took the table. And they were like. Like they just. Instead of politicking and being you know calm and cool. Like hey listen. You know there's more of us now. Instead of us having a little table and having to pull chairs up. No matter if we take the big table. And separate it. We would have did it, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just to keep the heat down, we would have did it. But the way they went about it was wrong. They just took the table from us, and we weren't having that. We weren't having that. So a bunch of us whites got together, the Spanish guys. They numbered up with us, and we were going, we were going to go to war with these, with the black guys. Now. There was only like two or three of them that physically went and took it, and they just let the rest of them know, oh, we got the, we got the long table, which made the rest of the group think, listen, they, that we gave up the table. It wasn't like that. So when, you know, we got all, to, when we, you know, we got a bunch of guys together, and we're like, listen, we're going to war, fuck it. They got more, they got more numbers, but we're going to war. Well... One of our soldiers called the head of the the black guys in, and I had a one to one with them, and I said, you know, I told him, listen, we understand there's more reviews. It's not a problem with the table. It's not the problem why we're, why we're having this issue. The problem is the way that they just disrespected us and took it. You know, made it feel like, oh, these guys are bitches. We're just gonna take shit from them. It's not happening. The head of the blacks. He totally agreed with me. And he was like, nah, that was wrong. They made it seem like you gave it up. They made it seem like you took, you know, we asked. There's no issue. We got no wall going on. They ended up handing it to these three black guys. And um, the three black guys that did it, they weren't gang related. They weren't gang affiliated. They were just with the blacks, you know what I mean? They put it to these three black guys, made them roll up their shit. And leave because of the disrespect and the way that they were causing a I want how you want to call it racial racial war would have happened. Um, they had a lot of guys. We had bigger guys. We had crazier guys. A lot of colored guys don't stab. There are a lot that will. Most of them won't stab. They're crash dummies. They'll swing. Um, a lot of the Puerto Ricans, white guys, they're more off the stab. You know what I mean? They like to play with knives. Black guys don't often do it. You know what I mean? Real hood brothers, they do. You know, they will. And there's a lot that will. But at this particular time, they didn't have a lot of guys that would stab and stuff. You know, and we did. They just didn't want to go to war. And it was rightfully so because we didn't do anything to warrant it. It wasn't like we disrespected anybody. They seen, you know, eight, nine of us just sitting at the table, and they had like 15 guys, you know what I'm saying? They were, no, nah, we're going to take it. So when the Spanish guys, they buddied with us um, because they didn't want these black guys just taking over the unit, you know what I mean? And, uh, but they deaded it, you know, and it was, uh, it was understood 
we ended up giving them the table we had the we had uh, we took the small tables you know once I talked to the the head of the blacks we we gave up the table they kept it it really didn't matter to me anyways because the next day they came in <laughs> grabbed me up scooped me took me down for a uh, urine and me and another guy from New Bedford and one from Taunton white guys we all got lugged so it was a good thing that we didn't go to war because had the next day came when another three guys were left the rest of them there would have got stomped out you know what I mean and it would have been bad for them but it all ended well um, they got the table we spent it was probably nine of us ten of us that ended up spending our holidays in the hole <laughs> It sucked. I wasn't able to see my kids and my girl at the time. My ex-girl. Um, but we had a good Christmas. We had a good holiday. And once we all got down to the hole, it was a good time. Uh, then we ended up going to F.A. after that. Which is a... Uh, it's a lockdown unit, but it's after you leave the hole. When you, when you transition back down to medium. Sucks. Sucks down there, but we had a good crew. So it made our time go easier, you know. But it was just a little story of how disrespect can make a, a normal situation go south when it don't need to. You know, and just a little speaking and understanding and letting the other set know, listen, we're ready to go when lose a draw. You know, that disrespect shit don't fly. When, when, when you give them respect, you get respect, you know. With that being said, it's your boy Big Will. My, my number one thing to let you all know. Stay out of prison. You won't need to deal with that. You, there's no worries. If you just stay out, you'll be okay. Do the right thing. Stay positive. Be a good person. You won't have to worry about prison and all that entails. With that, let's hit the like and subscribe button. Appreciate you all that have been here. Let's help this channel grow. Again, I want to have my cash app and my uh, PayPal. <laughs> it's all it's all accepted. I thank you very much, and everybody have a good day. Peace. I'll see you on the next one. Life after prison. Let's get it.